okay. then we'll have another 40 minutes or so for discussion after that. Okay, thank you very much for uh, the introduction. Anyway, uh, my name is Yoichi Kiyota I'm from Mason University. And the title is uh, Two Projects for Fostering Imagination, Communication Skills, and Intercultural Awareness. And uh, I really enjoyed Ida Sensei's presentation because uh, we share the uh, same kind of concept. And uh, she, um, Ida Sensei, uh, has some uh, impressive concept. Uh, imagination, of course, creative imagination, and also our personalization. Yes, and uh, that is a key concept uh, for my session too. Okay. And um, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, the two topics today. The first topic, Art My Project. Uh, is a collaborative art project involving schools around the world. And this is a project conducted at the senior school in Tokyo, uh, at my Mira project. Right? The second, Minpak project uh, expects children to learn about different cultures by, by a daily material selected by the museum curators. Uh, this project was conducted at the elementary school in Osaka. Okay, and uh, uh, let me introduce my teaching career. Uh, I taught English at Metropolitan High School, uh, Toritsu Koko, eh? uh, about uh, 25 years uh, or more, maybe, uh, or, yes, or more, more than 25 years. And then I moved to the Meisei University um, and made us some research of English education and related themes and language education. Uh, editing English textbooks for senior high school uh, students is one of my important educational career. And through these experiences, I believe Linkage, the theoretical and the practical aspect is important. Uh, yes, and when I was when I was in high school, and uh, uh, I ha I also have experience teaching at the junior high school, and then uh, I have I, I I hadn't had to uh, uh, a chance to think over theoretical aspect just. Uh, uh, improving the language skills. Uh, but I think the theoretical aspect is also important. Of course, uh, you have already, you have all, all the attendance of this uh, session uh, understand that, that background. And the recent, my recent concern is language education corroborated with museums. Uh, any museums, not only the art, but also a science and historical and so on. Yes, the linkage is very important. Okay, so uh, I'd like to talk about the theoretical aspect first. I've heard that uh, uh, the attendance of today uh, prefer uh, the practical uh, aspect than a theoretical, uh, but it's really important to understand the uh, my, my the two, two project I introduced today. So uh, please listen uh, carefully now. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Uh, as the world becomes more globalized and interconnected, the call for usable English, practic practical English uh, skills has increased in Japan. In 2015, as English education reform, uh, mixed, the mixed Monkasho eh, announced that to cooperate proactively with the people of different cultures and languages, it is necessary to improve the level of skill in English. As a global lingua franca, uh, 
maybe uh, uh, this statement showcases the importance of the acquiring intercultural understanding and the communication skills in order to cope with globalization. And this is expected to be accomplished through the improvement of English skills. And however, this statement may lead to wrong direction, okay, uh, which is language skills equate intercultural skills. Okay, what do you think? And uh, maybe uh, later, uh, maybe it, it will be the theme topic of the discussion later. L do you think language skills equate intercultural skills? Okay. And one year before the proposal, uh, to 2014, uh, the next Monka show suggested some ideas for improving English education at upper secondary schools. And uh, even, even though the next proposal aims to enhance student English communication skills by providing them with abundant uh, opportunities to use English in various classroom-based language activities. The suggested tasks such as uh, presentations, discussions, and negotiations uh, could just be considered an artificial context focusing on language skills rather than providing opportunities to discuss real world issues which require solutions. Of course, I myself often use presentation activities in my classes, but I believe we should discuss procedure and the context of a presentation, how learners personalize their presentation themes is important. And this is also another discussion topic and I would like to your opinions later, okay? Uh, okay, uh, as a, uh, another theoretical aspect, as a pre prerequisite of the considering practical ways of implementing intercultural communication in language classes, the attitude of Japanese youth toward their own society and the world in general needs to be considered. Have you ever seen this, uh, you know, questionnaire? Have you ever before? Yes. Uh, the result of an international survey conducted by the Nippon Foundation, Nippon Zaidan in Japanese, in 2019, focusing on the awareness of the world youth toward society and country uh, indicate that the responses of young, young Japanese differ to those given by respondents from other countries. And the yellow highlight is a Japanese uh, percentage. And the results show that for all items, not only a few items, but all items, young people in Japan rank behind their peers. For example, the number of Japanese young people who considered themselves uh, to be uh, responsible members of society is only about 44% uh, compared uh, to the selected second lowest figure uh, being 74 of uh, the South Korea. Uh, when asked, uh, do you believe you can change your country or society? About 80%, 18%, very low, of Japanese respondents replied yes with the second lowest figure being 40%, and again, South Korean respondents. And the question, do you make it a point to discuss social issues with your family and friends? Do you talk about uh, social issues? 
uh, with your friends and families. About 27% of Japanese respondents replied yes, with the second uh, fear being 55%, uh, again, South Korea. And uh, considering these results, how can we expect active discussion or presentation on social topic at the English learners class, learning class? Okay, and what do you think? Um, I believe uh, this inward tendency, inward looking tendency uh, will also affect uh, young people's motivation to learn uh, foreign language on level two. And uh, to, uh, 2013, Yashima said like this, suggest it might also affect Japanese people's willingness to communicate and work with dissimilar others. Consequently, uh, the intercultural competence of the Japanese public may not be cultivated as much as it could be. This might also affect people's motivation to learn an L2 in order to have face-to-face -face communication with dissimilar others living in different parts of the world, as well as those coming to Japan. Uh, it's my personal experience. Uh, students are not willing to express their opinions about social issues which need solutions. Uh, they prefer the private uh, information like uh, what kind of music they like or, uh, and so on, the fashion and so on, private, uh, more private, not social matters. Uh, what do you think? Do you have any similar experience in your classes? or maybe a, a teaching children is a different uh, atmosphere, I'm sure, but uh, uh, secondary level, I mean the junior and senior high and uh, university levels, don't you feel this kind of experience? Uh, I think the reason of the inward looking tendency, it's my personal opinion, um, Inward looking tendency is not an innate national characteristics. I mean, the kokuminsei ne, Nihon no kokuminsei dewa nai, dewa nai. But caused by the lack of their personal experiences, which enables them to exchange their opinions with others. They haven't had enough opportunities. Uh, to build their own language expressions or language, uh, either or their mother tongue, Japanese, or the second language, uh, mainly the English, through discussing social matters in their classes. Uh, maybe it's my, it's my personal opinion, so uh, I'd like to uh, know your answers, opinions later after the, uh, this presentation. What do you think? Yes. Uh, but actually, uh, the attitude, awareness, uh, surely have some um, relationship with their motivation for the language learning. Okay. And uh, generally, Understanding the serious global issues and uh, actively involving in the society, exploring their solutions are not easy behaviors, uh, I understand, uh, for young, young learners. Yes, it requires attitudes, something like opening a door behind which you cannot predict what awaits you. And if they have some imagination, supported by their own language, uh, they may be able to expect the scenes behind the door. I think uh, language learning, either the first or the second, should encourage learners to enhance these attitudes for opening the door. What do you think? Uh, is it ex excessive requirement? 
for language learning. Anyway, I, I would like to your opinions later. Okay. And considering the attitude and feelings of Japanese youth toward active social awareness and perceived ability to change society, it can be assumed that simply focusing on improving English language skills will not be sufficient to improve the situation. Uh, I'd like to suggest the keywords uh, which include personalization of global issues from the perspective of multiple cultures. Uh, one is uh, global citizenship education and others uh, experimental learning and project-based learning. As uh, attitude toward the outside world could influence L2 communication, educators need to consider uh, how to foster a more independent attitude toward evaluating uh, global issues from intercultural uh, points of view when designing EFL classroom activities. This is also necessary to discuss what kind of global education is appropriate for Japanese society. And now uh, we have a, a terrible uh, percentage of their uh, young learners, young people's attitude toward the society and so on. And we need to think about that. Examining young people's attitude toward the society and their foreign language education from the perspective global citizenship education is a possible step in the right direction. Okay, and what do you think? And the two projects I introduced today have informative suggestions for considering this matter. And uh, now I, I'm really interested in, in the Ida Sensei's presentation. Uh, she emphasized some kind of uh, personalization, making stories for uh, you know, deflecting uh, the children, children's language activities. I think that is very important the making stories, personal stories for each other's learner, uh, language learning. And it's kind of one, one way to uh, personalization of the language. Uh, I mean, the learning, language learning. Okay. Um, uh, are you with me now? <laughs> okay, let's go on to the practical aspect. And, um, uh, please, uh, anyway, please open your eyes wide and listen to the, uh, concentrate on the actual uh, project. And the first, the Art My Mural project is uh, an educational, educational and cultural project. This project is expected to encourage young people to understand the importance of collaboration and respect mutual diversity. Uh, the project started in 1997 when it brought 350 Bosnian orphans uh, together to paint a mural on a Brit Riddle bed sheet. Can you imagine? Uh, I, I looked for the photograph, but I couldn't. And uh, it's, uh, it's too early to say this, but uh, in the future, uh, it's the children or the students of uh, Ukraine and the Russian uh, get together and paint this mural. Uh, I, I do really expect in the future. Okay, and the Japan Art Mile Project Office supports this interactive and collaborative learning project on uh, common themes uh, such as education, equality, and the environment between schools in Japan and overseas partner schools uh, using the internet. Uh, from elementary schools to senior high schools, various schools attend the project. 
Okay, it aims to develop uh, the five goals and cross-cultural understanding, critical thinking, active learning, global collaboration, creative expression. Okay. And you can see these goals of the website of Japan Art Mile uh, office. Uh, in 2019, Toyo Joshi Senior High School, Toyo Joshi Gakuen, in Tokyo, uh, in Tokyo, Sugamo, and conducted this Art Mile mural project. And Sugamo is famous for uh, as Obachan uh, no uh, Harajuku. Have you ever heard that? Uh, Harajuku for grandmas. Uh, you, you don't. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, uh, it's some kind of a, uh, you know, the place for, uh, you know, older people to get together and enjoy the shopping and so on. Uh, there is a famous temple. Anyway, uh, this school is near uh, in Sugamo. And uh, the partner schools uh, is uh, Czech Republic and Portugal. And usually uh, the project expects one partner schools, uh, but this time and the school in Portugal couldn't find the partner school. So the Japanese uh, office of the at my office asked the Toyo Joshi uh, to have the two partner schools. Uh, they agreed. So, and this time, this year, they have two partner schools, uh, Czech Republic and Portugal. And the Kyuji Sensei. Uh, she is an English teacher of the this high school, Toyo Joshi Gakuen, uh, took the initiative uh, in carrying out the project. And uh, Kyuji Sensei and I have been uh, editing textbooks for senior high school students, uh, many textbooks. And the name, the title of the books is uh, All Aboard Cities, uh, published by Tokyo Shoseki. And uh, Toyo Joshi Senior High School wanted to promote global education as one of the whole school educational goals. So I was involved in this project as an advisor of the global education. So this project was carried out as a whole second whole school activity. And that is the point, whole school activity while uh, creating the mural, a mural is a key component of this project, uh, but uh, participants are also required to actualize their uh, SDG, SDGs uh, ideas in their own local community. And uh, this year's uh, topic is SDGs. Okay. The project can be broadly divided into five steps. Uh, the activities completed in step first step, uh, you know, to uh, step one through the step four, were conducted during uh, EFL classes as well as uh, during after school hours. Not only the uh, ordinary. Uh, uh, learning schedule, but also they have extra uh, hours, use extra hours after uh, classes. And the first step, uh, encounter, uh, introducing each other through the video conference and exchange self-introduction through emails and video letters. Yes, and uh, second step, recognition, understanding the cultures and the societies of the partner schools by researching information in books and websites. And the third step, interchange, uh, discuss the basic message and for attainment of goal uh, number 11, and goal 15, and goal 11 for uh, Portugal and the goal 15 is for uh, Czech, Czech Republic. 
of SDGs. And it's decided on the final design of the mural while considering each other's cultural differences. I think it, the third step is very important. Maybe you are, you know, uh, knowing each other and discussing their uh, op opinions about uh, uh, what kind of cultural image they use. Uh, I think that I, later I will talk about that. Uh, step four, the production, uh, they engaged in the actual creation of the murals. And the final step, uh, they evaluated and analyzed their learning experience and writing the portfolio. Okay. Now, uh, please watch the introduction activity uh, with the students in the Czech Republic. I'm sorry, uh, maybe uh, it's a kind of a uh, privacy, students' privacy, so uh, you cannot have the clear image but you can uh, understand the atmosphere of that starting stage. Yes. Sorry, Bef before you play it, could we pause the recording of the of the presentation? Then we then we'll be able to. Yes. Okay. So uh, we cannot see their faces, emotions clearly. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> they look really, really nervous because it was the first meeting for them. And, uh, but uh, a good point is uh, the English language is a second language for the two countries' uh, students. I mean, the both students, uh, student in Czech Republic and uh, so, uh, Jap of course, for Japanese students. So uh, maybe uh, uh, the one of the goal is, you know, improving their English language too. Okay. Um, uh, generally, students learn about global issues such as environmental problems uh, through their social science and uh, EFL textbooks. Maybe uh, I myself uh, editing the EFL textbooks and uh, every, every English textbook for senior high school level has uh, uh, environmental problems now and, and any and other uh, social problems, other topics of the unit. And uh, this, this, but uh, this content does not usually translate into the conducting out of classroom activities. For instance, reading about the effect of microplastics on sea life may not motivate students to collect rubbish on the beach, uh, generally speaking. Uh, however, Researching SDGs and creating the mural through uh, collaboration with the student in the partner schools encouraged the personal perspective and allowed the student to internalize the issue addressed by that SDG. One of the students described her learning about SDGs as follows. Uh, I also learned that uh, these issues should be dealt with not only in our country, but also all countries in the world. That's why I thought that every one of us should be aware of them. 
and think of solutions. I think uh, that starting with small steps may lead to the final solutions. Uh, this comment suggests that the being involved the global issues has become one of her important learning experience. Uh, maybe our, the, the student recognized the importance, uh, the uh, actual solutions. They, we need actual solutions to improve the uh, environment. Okay. And at the beginning of the project, the student didn't have clear image of a mural as a public art. So I suggested to see the real murals in Tokyo, uh, such as big mural in Shibuya Station uh, by Taro Okamoto. Uh, maybe uh, many of you have seen this mural uh, from the passage from Yamanote Line to the uh, Inogashi Line, the very big, huge one. And, and a uh, student visited the station or other, uh, other public art murals at the public art in Tokyo area. And actually we have various kinds of murals in Tokyo. Especially seeing mural art at the museum, uh, not the public spaces, but the museum uh, served as a powerful support for generating uh, cross-cultural dialogue and building relationships. And furthermore, uh, visiting museums seems to increase their motivation to engage in this project. And the students visited the Metropolitan Art Museum, Tokyo to Bizuskan, Metropolitan Art Museum, to see a mural created by Klimt. This is one, Klimt, uh, which was inspired, this mural was inspired by the Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Uh, Beethoven's Freeze, the title. Yes, uh, of course, uh, it, it was a replica. An original one is displayed in a secession building at the Vienna. A student uh, who viewed the mural, mural, this mural, wrote her expression as follows. I felt as if it depicted a world totally different from the world I live in now. Uh, from the mural painting, I gained a suggestion, which is the first impression appearing to viewers. Uh, a viewer's emotions is especially important. And this comment suggests the student recognized that emotional curiosity leads to intellectual curiosity. And uh, Ida Sensei's presentation, and she thinks of much of the emotional aspect of language learning. I think that is very important. And emotion, at first, emotional curiosity leads to the uh, they deepen, deepen the, uh, their curiosity, so such as intellectual ones. And this, uh, this comment uh, is, uh, explain her uh, deepening of her uh, curiosity. Okay. And as a half of the mural was to be completed by the participants from each other's countries, the student could not actually see the completed mural, uni, uh, mural until it was sent back from the partner school. And at first, a Japanese student wrote, uh, painted, created this part, right? And also uh, this is a Japanese, uh, 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 circle, a round area is for Japanese part. So uh, after finishing in the, this area and this area, they sent a uh, mural to the port, port school in Portugal. So they have to predict the uh, completed one. Okay, now 
suppose if you create a mural as a student, what kind of images would you like to use? Uh, Japanese culture image, images or Portuguese images. Okay, I, I will give you uh, one minute, one or two minutes. So please uh, draw the images maybe now and later I would like, I'd like to ask you. And uh, of course the message is to have future, we need to balance today's human lifestyles with nature and take care of natural and cultural heritage. This is the point. Take care of natural and cultural heritage. Okay, please try to uh, create your design. Uh, maybe the original design is this. So, and what kind of cultural image would you like to use? Okay. <laughs> uh, next slide, I will show you the completed one. So please uh, draw your, your version. Okay. According to this design, eh? just half. Okay. Finished. <laughs> okay. And maybe this point is, and the Ida sensor also used the uh, creative imagination uh, for language learning. Uh, I really, uh, ag you know, I totally agreed with her idea from this point, emotional and creative imagination. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go on to the completed one. Okay, this is a completed one, final version. Okay, can you see this? Uh, one of the students commented, commented, we created the mural with awareness of how to express what is uniquely Japanese and how to, uh, this is of course Japanese student opinion, uh, how to relate it to the theme of SDGs. We drew the following images in line with the uh, uh, contents of goal 11. Uh, large cherry blossom tree. This is a cherry blossom tree. And the pink area is flowers, cherry blossom flowers. And deer, and this is a deer. Uh, the pansies, pansies, okay, three kinds of pansies, of oh, cherry uh, pansies, okay. Mm. Uh, uh, the day grew, uh, the we grew at the part of the SDGs activities. Uh, I thought the process of the cherry blossom tree growing could symbolize a message of preserving nature in goal 11. Okay. And the student recognized uh, difficulty in expressing the verbal messages using their cultural symbols. Uh, collaboratively with the different cultural symbols of our partner school, Portugal. For example, Japanese students used cherry blossom trees like this uh, for botanical richness, while students from Portugal used traditional blue tiles. I uh, mean, name of the tile is azul or something like that, the uh, traditional tile. Uh, for richness of the ocean. However, this experience gave them good opportunities to recognize benefits of visual literacies, visual literacies and led to the further exploration of various aspects of culture. Okay. And uh, we conducted surveys to consider the student awareness. And uh, for four questions, four descriptors. I want to know more about countries of partner school. I want to know more about the world. And I want to learn English more. And the final descriptor, the Atma Mira project is meaningful experience for me. And the number one, number two changed uh, significantly. 
uh, unfortunately, their motivation to learn English uh, didn't change. Uh, of course, increased. Uh, the four, it's a four point scale. And the, their motivation to learn English didn't change as much as I, we had expected. Anyway, uh, but we should uh, consider the result in the long way, not short sighted way. Okay, uh, this is a whole, whole learning image of Automobile Mural Project. Can you, can you, the, uh, the letter is small. Can you read it? Can you see? Okay. And creating mural, mural uh, collaboratively with overseas partner schools means there's no ready-made goal, no ready-made goal. And the participants have to use decision-making decision strategies to finish their artwork. Uh, and some students said it was a good opportunity to learn how to design their own learning, learning independently because their teachers didn't know the procedure either. And they didn't uh, have the clear image of the, uh, you know, of how to do, how to conduct the project. Of course, they completed the mural, a teacher. Ne? So, uh, and one major merit of the Atma Mural Project lies in the focus on the creative learning. Yes, and the creative imagination, using creative imagination, which is a driving force all learning activities. And uh, create, creating murals and artwork requires students to explore uh, their own language goals. This experience encouraged uh, building the confidence on intercultural communication. In other words, personalization of intercultural experience. And uh, so the key word is how to personalize uh, own, own language learning. Personalization is a key word. Okay, and let's go on to the another project. Uh, are you with me now? <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, and and uh, I'd like to talk about the MIMPAC. Uh, the, this uh, about the MIMPAC, I explained in uh, briefly at uh, uh, at the Nagano University. Uh, and it was Pansig, Pansig Conference eh? and at the summer, at the, at the beginning of the summer. I really enjoyed the uh, conference. Uh, after the several, uh, two or three years intervals, actually face-to-face -face conference. And, and I talked about this briefly, but this is a full, full uh, version explanation, my explanation. Okay, uh, in recent years, uh, it's a four elementary schools. Eh? Uh, in recent years, many elementary schools have English textbooks, have included abundant topics related to the study of in language and culture. Language and culture. Uh, many of the cultural topics covered in textbooks introduced as visual information of photographs. It's actual page of the uh, sixth grade uh, textbooks. Uh, and it, and uh, it is appropriate, I think. Yes, using the photographs is appropriate way because learners can instantly understand basic information of the covered items including the background atmosphere. However, many of the cultural topics tend to introduce typical examples of foreign culture, such as countries I would like to visit. This one, this one, Egypt, Rome, America, Statue of Liberty, and so on. If, uh, and, uh, uh, or maybe, 
these are the typical, maybe uh, typical examples of foreign culture. Né? Uh, so, for example, and the other is uh, cuisine, wild cuisines and uh, foodstuffs. And if children learn about these topics only from such views, they will not be able to deepen uh, their learning of culture, the superficial ones. At the beginning is okay, but they should deepen their learning of uh, cultural learning. If cultural object, uh, subjects are treated in a superficial manner, uh, there is a possibility that the learning may stay at the level of stereotype cultural views. And this is a quiz type uh, question. Uh, actual the quiz on the textbook. Uh, what is this country? And hint one, you can eat the pizza. Second hint, you can buy olive oil. The hint three, you can see the costume. Except hint three, we can eat pizza and olive oil in many countries, right? Uh, so the, only the cross Colosseum is a key hint. Okay, considering uh, the children's academic ages and the fifth graders and the sixth graders, the, they should have opportunities to activate their higher cognitive skills than these kind of a quiz type study ask typical knowledge about the following countries. Okay, and now what sort of learning do children need to avoid? Uh, okay, what sort of uh, learning do children need in order to avoid building stereotype culture abuse? And later, I would like to, uh, your opinions, uh, how can we avoid uh, building this kind of stereotype culture abuse. It's one of the uh, topics of our discussion. Okay. As, as one of the benef beneficial learning activities, I'd like to introduce a project-based learning, learning uh, MIMPAC. It's a um, meaningful uh, learning kit. It's a learning kit, uh, educational, as, as an educational service provided by National Museum of Ethnology. Uh, in Japanese, Kokuritsu Minzoku Gaku Hakubutsukan. Just it's located in Osaka, uh, Banpak Koen. And origin, originally, they gathered, uh, the collection is from the uh, exhibitions of. Uh, uh, Bangkok Hakurankai, uh, many years ago in Osaka. And the National Museum of Ethnology, Kokuritsu Minzokaku Hakubutsukan, was founded to provide people with the information of the societies and the cultures of people in the world and to deepen their awareness and understanding of the various ethnic groups. Okay, can you see this picture, uh, a ref side picture? And it's the entrance of the uh, museum. And the sign says like this, niteiru, sore tomo chigau, similar or different. Uh, the concept of this is, uh, museum is this, similar or this, uh, similar or the different. And this is uh, one of the exhibits and the hijabs, and they have their various hijabs. Okay, and the MIMPAC is a learning kit uh, containing items related to daily lives uh, of people from around the world, various area, collected by curators of the museum. And the students and the children can explore the uh, uh, regions and the cultures of their tooth through direct contact. They can touch these uh, ones. They can borrow uh, the, uh, as a suitcase, package of the suitcase. Uh, direct contact, appreciation, and background research. And you can see the book, red book. It's a Quran 
it's a package of a Muslim area, uh, world Muslim people, the title of this package, and the Quran. And uh, the guideline says like this, uh, be careful when you touch this book, Quran, and please wear the gloves. So, and the children can understand, uh, maybe the learners can understand how important and precious this book is, the Quran. And the left side is hijabs, various kinds of hijabs, colorful, colorful ones and the black one and so on. Okay. And uh, from October 2021, just one year ago, and to, uh, to February of this year, uh, this project was conducted uh, for the sixth graders of Satsuki Gakuen in Osaka. It's a uh, public school, Satsuki Gakuen in Osaka. And Kitano Sensei, Kitano Yuki Sensei, uh, a teacher of the, the Satsuki Gakuen school, and I collaboratively conducted the project. And Kitano Sensei is a very famous uh, teacher, and she is good at uh, conducting this project based learning. The goal of the project is uh, holding Satsuki Muslim Museum exhibition. The goal ne? Uh, is holding uh, Satsuki Muslim Museum exhibition using the items. And uh, preparatory activities of the project have three kinds of steps. First, introductory activity. The opening the packages of the two minpak. Uh, this minpak packages. One is life of world Muslims, and the other is world of Arabian Arabian nights. And the students uh, imagine the usage of the tools that they they are interested in. What kind of how, how do they use this item and so on? And second, research activity and taking Muslim daily items, just touch um, the uh, daily items in their hands, uh, such, as, such as wearing hijabs, and, uh, one of the girls wearing hijabs, small size hijab. And the school uniforms of uh, Arabian, uh, maybe a Muslim area, a totally different from Japanese, uh, school uniforms and the four girls uniform they have to hide their hairs and so on <laughs> the through through the activities the children considered the differences and similarities with japanese tools and then research how to use the tools through the library materials library and the internet they can research like this <laughs> <clears throat> and the preparation activity for presentation, the children summarize their research like this and the findings for the exhibitions. Uh, based on their research, they create English scenario uh, explanation of the items uh, for the presentation exhibition. Right? And after researching their items, uh, exhibit and appreciation activities will be conducted in groups divided into the categories as uh, clothing, food, books, and so on. The children are allotted two roles, curators and visitors. Curators and visitors. It's a kind of uh, temporal uh, exhibition. So the roles, curators and visitors, and which are switched, they, they switched during the activities. And this photo shows uh, curators uh, role uh, activity. And this girl explained a carpet for Muslim worship. And uh, I will show you, uh, please listen to the interaction uh, between the curator and the visitors. And the uh, visitor is me. Okay, and uh, so you can record 
this video, of course. And uh, uh, I made it um, unclear, uh, not to see, not to identify the uh, student. Hello. Hello, Asa. Hello, Asa. Drink. Yeah. Wonderful job. Good job. Thank you. Okay, and this girl, um, as a curator, explained the rose water. Rose water, and maybe a, we, mm, it's kind of a perfume, um, but uh, it also, uh, they, they mean the Muslim people use rose water for not only the uh, Crows, but also our food and the drinks. And the, the gar explained like this. Okay. And uh, and many many of them, uh, not only the uh, two or three, but the many the half of the student uh, can became a curator. And then the, during the uh, uh, activities, they change the role. Okay. Okay, and uh, in the introduction of the face, before touching the tooth, and I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, changes of the children's awareness. Uh, in the, at the starting phase, I mean the introduction phase, before touching the tooth, the many of the children expressed their overall expression of Muslim culture and society as scary, scary. Many of them mentioned negative aspect of Muslim society, such as discrimination against women, a strict fasting and prohibition of eating pork and other foodstuffs. And uh, some changes were observed in the comments after they opened the package and touched the items. They said, it was fun to actually touch the tools, or uh, it's interesting to image how they, uh, Muslim people, use these items, which are different from ones in Japan. My impression and others, my impression against Muslim countries with severe discriminations has changed. Uh, maybe the, this this uh, ch child maybe uh, recognizes some variations yeah, variations of uh, the items. Uh, the experience of the direct contact with the object promoted their curiosity in unknown Muslim culture and changed their initially negative attitude. In addition, some of them developed the negative viewpoint comparing Japanese culture and Muslim, uh, uh, relative, I mean, the developed relative viewpoint and comparing Japanese culture and Muslim culture. One of the students mentioned like this, I think that what is strange from the Japanese point of view is also strange from the Muslim people point of view. This comment shows the student has acquired the relative point of view through this activity. In, unfortunately, uh, in Iran, a recent news of hard protesting, this demonstration caused by the young woman's way of wear the hijab, right? And uh, when they face, I mean the children, the student, uh, face this kind of news. The student can consider the news from both affirmative and negative points of view. Uh, maybe uh, multiple point of views, uh, not, not arbitrary one-sided view. This is one of the benefits, I think. Okay, this is the uh, end of my presentation. 
And I'd like to talk about the suggestion of the project uh, and the both project. And the both of them have no ready-made goals, no ready-made goals, which requires student decision-making, critical thinking, and independent learning, and so on. And the main benefit is students recognize the quality of their language learning. It could intensify their motivation, engagement, enjoyment, and enjoyment is very important, I think, and the creativity. And furthermore, they could feel being involved in the global issues, which may enhance their cultural awareness. And uh, I believe this feeling will encourage them to open the doors. Uh, you remember the door I uh, previously showed. Open the doors for accessing the world uh, outside their, school, their schools. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you for listening. And this is uh, uh, differences of my presentation and one more information. Uh, if you are interested in my topic, especially the uh, art my project, I wrote one chapter of this book, uh, Global Citizenship in Foreign Language Education, Concept, Practices and Connections. And so you can uh, read this book, uh, details of the, and the more details of the proje project and the more theoretical side aspect. And I'm re most grateful to Gaddy <laughs> uh, for supporting me in examining my English expressions and the uh, consistency of the uh, content. And coming soon, this will be published at the end of this month. Okay.